Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana and I am an acrylic artist. Thank you for stopping by to paint with me today. Today we're going to be painting on a journal page, doing a little bit different of a technique. Uh, for those of you who like to do journal painting, I think this will be a really fun one for you to do. Um, let's take a look at what we're doing. We're going to be painting this watermelon page right here. I love how this turned out. I've uh, did some washes of color in the background, some stamping, some splattering, and uh, just use lots of thin layers of paint on here. It is going to be such a fun project to do. So I hope you're going to paint along with this one. It'll be a really fast one to do. So if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe and the notification bell so you know every time that I'm posting a video or going live on my YouTube channel. And please give me a thumbs up. It all helps me out right here on YouTube for my channel to grow and I appreciate every single one of you. So if you're ready, let's grab our journal page or you can paint it on anything you want, our paints, and let's get ready to paint some watermelon. Base coated with bleach sand and my roller. It's dry now. So, dampen my brush. I'm going to mist the paper. Okay, way up there. Kind of smooth that out on there. Alright, I'm going to pick up some, some brown. This is dark chocolate and put some in there, wipe my brush off, grab some green, maybe some more green, some red, a little bit more brown, and maybe a little bit more red. This is heritage brick. Okay, throw my brush in my palette in my basin. Okay, here's where we're going to get some fun stuff going. So, you're going to have to, if you're paying along with me, you're going to have to be able to um, dry your paper when it's done, because we're going to get it pretty wet here. Misting. I've got way too much paint on here. Take some of the paint off. And then I'll mist some more. Well, when this dries, it will be much lighter. some hard places. Take your finger and just scrubby dub dub them and spritz with some more water. And then let it roll. Let it roll one way, let it roll back the other. Get it to where you're happy with it. I don't like some of these thick places on here. Okay, so this is going to be very light when it dries. It's 
It's not going to have a lot of color in it. But if you want it to have more color, put a paper towel down here because I don't want to lay this into that wet stuff. And you just grab your brush and while it's wet, Some more in here. Some darker green. And a little bit of brown in here. Pick up my paper towel. And roll it one way. Roll it back the other. And once you're done with letting it roll one way or the other, then you're just going to lay it down and let it dry. Okay? It's going to get it really, really, really wet. You can force it dry with a heat tool. It's got a lot of water on it, so it's going to take a little bit. Just work on getting it completely dry. You can see all those colors are pretty light. It's still really wet down here. I'm going to pick my papers up when I'm done and put some new papers down underneath it. Alright, looks like it's pretty dry. Okay, I want it to lay flat, so I'm going to lay it someplace where it can stay flat and clean up my mess here. pieces of paper here. And we'll start adding some more stuff to the background. Because, oops, it's a little damp right there. Let's dry that. I really don't want it wet for our next step. Okay. Alright, I've got 
gotten some of my stamps out. This one is the one I think I'm going to use. Um, this one is the Cling Postscript. I like how big it is. And then I think I might use this one, Color Outside the Lines. I don't think Stampenda sells this one anymore. Not 100% sure. Of course, this is my absolute favorite one. So if you want to use this one, this is the uh, Cling Vintage Note Stamp. So you could use that one. And then I might use uh, something else on here, but I'm not 100% sure. So right now I'm going to use my Stays on Ink. This is Timber Brown, the color that I'm using. And I'm going to ink up my stamp here. Okay. And then I'm just going to I'm not sure if I want to put it on at an angle or straight. Well, let's go straight with it, I think. that in there. Come over here and do some. Oh, I like that, how it's kind of more faded in there than that. This one I should have um, tapped off some of the ink before I put it on. So what I'll have to do probably is wash over that. And remove some of it up here and some down here. We don't have to fill the whole thing. We can have empty spaces in here. So let me see if I can wash over that and get it a little less. Let's see, I'll go with some of the green because the green is over here. I'm not sure it's going to affect this ink, so more brown over here. Okay, it's pretty bold on there, so try not to do it quite as bold as I did. You know, tap some of your ink off of your stamp before you um, before you um, put it to your surface. I'm going to spritz this stamp. I don't want that ink to dry on there. So, I want to get my design on here now and um, work with that. So, let's dry this since I put some washi paint on there. All right, we got some basic color stuff going on here. So, let's grab a paintbrush to use with this. about using um, media fluid paints and you can use those but I decided to keep it some paints that you, know, you would have. Alright so I've got some of my old brushes here. Let's see how they're going to work out. So I really want this to be um, of washy in my colors. So I'm going to dampen this. I'm going to just dampen this whole watermelon. We'll just see how it goes from there. We're going to start with the uh, dark green. So I'm just going to get some on the corner of my brush and go um, right along here. All the way up here. Okay, just start with that. Grab a, another brush and I'll dampen this one. I 
getting it pretty damp but not dripping. You know what I mean? If I, if I turn it up, it's not going to roll anywhere. A little bit of water in my brush because that's a lot of paint I put on right there. I want these to stay light colors. I'm going to grab some of that. I don't have me out. I'm going to do some of the um, bleach sand and we'll use that color next on here. Okay, we we'll go to the, the next one. Now if you can't work fast enough and your your um your uh, water dries before you can move around both of your watermelons then just do one at a time bring that up a little bit we've got some red in there already put a little bit more water in here And then go into my red, which is that heritage. And we're going to start at the top. And work it down to that lighter color. And just blend it. I love painting fruit. Fruit in any form is... Um, just my favorite. So how about some fruit jokes while we're painting this? What do you think? Okay, we'll let it kind of fade down into that. Let's work on our pumpkin. Pumpkin. Our um, watermelon. So I'm going to dampen it. It's already got some green in it. I like that red in it, so I'm going to keep that red in it a little bit. So let's see. Let's let's go with that um, uh, joke here. Um, I'm going to paint this the lighter green. Now I think I'll I think I'll stick with the darker green because um, I'm just going to paint it a light color. All right. So why did the orange stop? Anyone? Anyone? Because it ran out of juice. So I'm going to leave that red in it right there. And not cover it up. That's looking pretty good. I want to take a little bit of this dark green. And put a little bit right along the edge down here. This is this edge. The edge of the watermelon will be the darkest. This one is a little darker than what I would have wanted it to be. I had a little bit too much paint on my brush and not enough water. And there I'm going to do this light area again. And then work it in a little bit more. Lots of watery stuff going on here. Okay, we want a little bit of a edge to our watermelon, so I'm going to take that um, light color, which is bleach sand, and get a little bit of red with it. Mix them together. And we're going to create a little edge here. It's ne more narrow there, and it's going to widen as it comes down this way. Grab a little bit more red. And it's going to be wider at this end. And on this one, it's kind of going to be the same. Grab a little bit of that lighter color. It's going to be narrower here. And then it can get a little bit wider as it comes down here because of the angle that it's setting. 
Okay, we'll take a little white to mix in with that bleach sand. And we're going to, that's a lot of white, just very loosely. Put that all along here. This one loosely on there, and we'll take some of that red with some water in our brush. Actually, I'm just going to dampen my watermelon right here because I, I want it to be darker right there next to it, but I don't want it to be. To be opaque, you know what I mean? I want to just blend some of that down. I want to still keep all that lettering on there from that stamp. All right, let's do this one. So I'm going to dampen it, and more paint. Scoot it down there. Put some on this side. I would say stay off that highlight, but I already got on it, so I have to come back with my highlight there. I obliterated that. As my two light colors kind of blended together. Okay, let's go out here to this one and let's dampen it. I want to start creating those um, wiggly lines on there. So we're first going to create the um, little end piece, which is a light color. And then I'm going to grab the dark green and we're going to go from there and just kind of wiggle along to the back. And we'll just go over here and do another one. They can be thin, they can be fat, no two watermelons are alike. So it's coming from there. I'm going to make it look like it's going around the watermelon. Almost like a little pinwheel, so it's coming from there. And kind of curving around the watermelon right there. Okay, I'm going to grab some of that lighter green. And put some of that on there while it's still wet. thing we can put a little little bit of the brown in here just kind of messily tap some in around that okay I need to grab some black and we'll put a few seeds in here now you can spatter on this as well which we just might do I'm not a fan of it I just do not like the mess that it makes at all. So let's put some seeds in here. Oh, that's a big seed. They don't have to be that big. Well, that's probably enough in that one. A little seeds in there, add a little highlight of white on them. I 
I'll do this with a detail liner. Take this liner and brighten up that edge just a little bit. This is a little round brush. Well, one round. Alright, let's come back over here to our watermelon. And we're going to create a wash of the two greens mixed together. That's not quite dry. Let's get it dry because we don't want to mess that up. That's a lot. Touch back with my finger a little bit. Get some of that off of there. Let's put some of the, uh, might be able to see just a little bit of line stuff on our slices here. If our rind is wide enough. And these are pretty short here, so I don't see much. Here. Okay, I'm going to do a little, little float here to separate these a little bit. And I'll do the green, dark green, with a tiny little bit of black. So right here. That white's not dry, so I'll stay out of it. That light color. I think I'm going to do that dark green with the black for our little um wiggle lines. I think they need to be a little bit darker. You don't have to fill them in where we went before. Just put it on top. And our um, thing in the center, go back to a little bit of brown, tap some of that in there. That's a little bright, I might add a little black to it. White wasn't quite dry, but I'll go around it with some of that green and black mix. Kind of outline it. Two greens. It's a lot. Let's darken this side over here a little bit. I'm gonna keep that side light. And we'll add our highlight on that side. 
which is our white and our bleach sand mixed together. sections. Do that down here as well. Just a little dabble do you here. So I want to float around everything here, and you can get a much bigger brush than what I've got here, but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to take the, um, the brown with a little bit of black, make close to a soft black. stuff out here. A little bit here. We can take this color and separate all of our fruit as well. For our watermelon, I think I'll use the red. Maybe add a little bit of brown to that and tone it down. And go around it. Define it a little bit. Go with a little bit of red with a little black. Over here. This one. underneath a little darker Okay, so this is where you can decide if you want to spatter it. I want to brighten up the highlight though just a little bit with some white. Use my angle brush because that one's not working. Not working for me. white and mix it with that light green. Ooh, 
too really bright. Maybe a touch too bright. Wipe it off, grab a little more white. I don't like that. I don't like that green mixed in there. Let's try the darker green and some white. of it beside each line. All right, that makes it look a little bit more like a watermelon. And I think that looks pretty good. So now your option to spatter. Uh, I think it would look good with some white spatters on here. So I'm gonna another piece of scrap paper here. And some of my stuff here. I don't like the spatter because it gets all over everything. Alright, I'm going to do white. Or you could do the um, off-white or do both. Mix them together. drops. I don't want that. Take those off. Ginormous. And a lot of water. And now I don't have enough. It's a fine line. Can I ever find the Let's add some brown spatters. A little more water. Needs to be a little juicier. few green ones. I'm going to use the dark green. And now we'll need some red, so I used all my red up, so i grab a little red out here. Water to thin it down. I got it really thin. All right, some of the ones down here. some red over here. I feel like it needs more over here. So you can go in in any of your places that you don't feel like it's dark enough and just wash in a little bit of color. And 
And then if you want to go around the outer edge of it and darken all of that, you can. Uh, but I did not, and I will not. Big drop of water there. Look at that. So I'm going to dry this, and then we're going to put a little sentiment on it. white dots on here are kind of thick, so they might take a little bit to dry. Okay, so we've got this one here. It says color outside the lines, and like I said, I don't know if this one is still available at Stampendous or not. I think it might be a discontinued one. But you can put any kind of sentiment or stamp on here that you would like. And I want to use some paint for this, maybe. Some white paint. Grab a dry cup sponge. Um, you could also put like a saying for the fruit of the spirit because I did it on one, but this is just one fruit, so I don't know if you want to stay with that or not. So I'm going to tap some white paint on here. so much that those little letters down there become filled with paint. Okay, let's see if that's enough. You can put so many other things and elements on here. And that did not come out very dark at all. So I'm going to wipe that off. And I'll use some black paint since I've gotten paint on here. Or I'll use brown. Let me see if I can wipe this off of here. this ink pad. If I can get enough of it off to use on the ink pad. I don't want this white paint getting in my ink pad. It'd be easier if I just took it to my sink with a little toothbrush. Of it, so I'll grab a dry paper towel and put it on there. Moisture off of it. I'll very lightly dry it because I don't want to damage my stamp here. All moisture's out. So then I'll add my brown ink onto it. And put this one on. And hopefully it will be straight. Color outside the lines. Love it. a little bit and 
sometimes you can do some other stuff around the border, you know, around the edges if you want to. You can make it go this direction if you would like, but um, get that dry. Can drop shadow that. Um, okay. There we have it. I think that is uh, where I'm going to leave that one. Looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. So there you have it. A watermelon. Color outside the lines. Any sentiment you want on it actually. And uh, you just use your background as the main part of the element. And just put some washes of color in there. Fun, fun, fun way to do a here. Alrighty. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that one. Okay, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.